We're now into week two of the federal election campaign, and leaders are trying to convince Canadian families that their platforms will work best for their budgets. Each week, we'll look at a different party's plan, starting today with the NDP, who are promising to make life more affordable for everyday people. And joining us this morning to break it down is Peter Sashaki from Everything Financial. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Carrie. How are you today? I'm great. This is going to be some good information a lot the next four weeks for people to be able to make some decisions and uh, learn a little bit more about the platforms and how it will affect them. And starting with the NDP, um, the party says that they'll enact a 1% wealth tax on people with more than $10 million in wealth. So what is the true tax consequence of that? Well, the two true tax consequences is people should be actually scared because you're paying tax now. It's called a, it's really called a capital tax. And you'd be paying tax on things you've already paid tax on, um, like your house, your, say your TFSA that you happen to hit it big with a stock and made lots of money, but you put your taxable money into that, or your RSPs, which you're going to already pay tax on when you take them out, or you're the farmer in Saskatchewan who owns a ton of combine equipment and that stuff's expensive, and now they suddenly want to arbitrarily tax it. But here's the truth with this one, Kerry. You cannot just tax the wealth of every Canadian over $10 million. You could just take all the assets of every Canadian who has over $10 million, put it against the federal debt, which is massive, and you wouldn't even make a hiccup. It wouldn't even be a blip on a radar screen. It's, it's a great sound bite, but it's a capital tax, which you should be very scared of, and it really means absolutely nothing because it wouldn't do anything. All right, let's move on to the next one. Hey, they say that they also want to roll back the three-point cut to corporate uh, income tax, which was enacted by the Harper government, and bring it back to the 2010 level of 18%. And this would be while keeping the small business tax rate at its current level. Tell us a little bit about how this will play out. Yeah, we're going to be talking about this one because everyone's talking about this one from all the different parties. So we're going to try and treat them all equal. But this is more of an education thing for the listeners and the viewers. It's really not a tax at all. It's just a change of cash flow because businesses already pay tax. If you actually had corporations pay zero tax and everyone goes, well, that's not fair. The corporations have to pay. Well, here's what happens with that money. It still comes out in tax just in a different form because what corporations then do is pay money out in research and development. They hire more employees and they pay out dividends to shareholders. And guess what happens to dividends to shareholders? their tax. So if you enact an increase in tax on corporations, all it means is the money you would have collected from the dividend tax from shareholders is now going to be paid by the corporation. Corporations have a very easy way of looking at this, and I don't care how big the corporation is, like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, etc. There's a pie. The pie is only so big. So all you're doing is changing the way you slice up the pie. So a corporate tax is really just a change and getting the tax quicker from the corporation than it is from the shareholders and it's really this thing called integration which always makes sure the government gets their piece of the pie from the corporations this is just a different way of doing it so again a good sound bite but don't worry on the next one we're going to give the ndp some kudos oh okay well that's interesting uh, here it is uh, they're going to be capping credit card merchant fees at one percent so should canadians expect to see a difference in that well, yeah, let's just hope that uh, Mr. Singh and the NDP party hit the hit it right with this one, right out of the park. This is a good one, and let's hope every other leader follows this lead, and if one of them gets in, they put this into place, because what this is is you're capping merchant fees. That I know some merchants that pay 12% on a certain credit card. The average is three or four. That money really goes to the credit card companies and those big banks that I love so much on this show. Um, but this puts more money maybe in consumers, maybe it lowers the price of some goods. But remember, a lot of these small merchants, small business owners are just trying to make a living and they're really going from paycheck to paycheck. So maybe this just puts a couple percent in their family's wallet, which then gets spent in society in other ways. So lower merchant fees, is good for the consumer and it's really good for the small business owner and it's maybe only a couple percent but as i said i'd like to give credit where credit is due credit to the ndp for bringing this up and i hope the liberals the conservatives all say you know what that's a great idea we're going to do that one too but they tend to be a little more friendly to the big banks so i'm not sure if they will but ndp you hit it right with this one. All right, and then in the coming weeks, we're we'll learning more about the Green Party's platform as well as the Liberals and Conservatives. Peter, thanks for breaking this down for us this morning. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day.